Hello and uh, welcome to section 4.7. We're going to look at stoichiometry now. And you'll remember we did that in our last unit, a lot of stoichiometry problems. And we're going to basically take those same steps and apply them to solution reactions. And it's a lot of review. And if you had trouble with it the first time, this will be a little bit more complicated, a little different twist on it, but a lot of the same principles. So um, first, I just wrote out the steps just to remind you a little bit. When we approach these problems, we want to always make sure we have a balanced equation. Um, some of you forgot to do that sometimes um, with the last problems. And if you don't have a balanced equation, you have no idea what's going on. You do not know mole-to-mole -mole ratios at all between products and reactants. And so you have to start out with writing the balanced chemical equation. Um, the second thing, remember, we need the moles of the, react one, the reactant or both reactants. Um, but we need the, to either calculate the number of moles if we're given other information or um, note the number of moles that we're given in the problem. The third step is to calculate the number of moles of either the other reactant or one of the products um, or both of the products depending on what the question is asking for. And we use our mole to mole ratio to find that based on the moles of the reactant that we had uh, calculated before. Then, if we need to, we determine the limiting reactant. Um, if not, uh, we don't need to worry about that. But then we also, at the very end, we want to convert um, whatever our moles are of either the pro other product or the reactant. We want to convert that into whatever the required unit is. It might be grams. We might, they might be asking for number of moles. Just leave it as moles. Or they might be asking for the number of molecules. So those are the basic steps. This is just sort of like reactant plus reactant going to product plus product. Um, so let's do some examples. OK, let's look at our first example. Calculate the mass of solid sodium chloride that must be added to 1.5 liters of a 0 0.100 molar silver nitrate solution to precipitate all of the silver ions in the form of silver chloride. It's kind of a mouthful there. Two things are obviously different. One is that we're going to be talking about ions um, that are dissociated in the solution. We didn't do that before when we did stoichiometry. And we're also going to be talking about molarity. And those are two concepts we're incorporating into the stoichiometry calculations. So first, what do we want to do first? Really important, write a balanced equation, right? So I'm going to go ahead, since you all know how to write, uh, net ionic equations, that's what we're going to write. Um, we know that we are we have uh, sodium chloride and silver nitrate and they're going to form in solution, uh, when they're mixed in solution, they're going to form uh, silver chloride. Um, and that's going to be our precipitate. I'm going to write just the ions that are involved in this reaction. We have a silver plus one ion. We have the chloride ion, and so we'll dissolved in solution, because we know that when sodium chloride um, dissolves, that it yields the sodium and a sodium plus one and chloride plus one ions. Also, um, the silver chloride that forms is a precipitate, so it's going to be a solid. Um, this is balanced. Uh, we already have looked at that. So now what do we do next? We're going to look at calculating the moles of the reactants. So in this case, we're going to need to add just enough chloride ions to react with all of the silver ions present. So we want to go ahead and calculate the number of moles of these silver ions that we have. Remember that um, a 0 0.100 molar silver nitrate solution contains 0 0.100 molar silver plus one ions and 0 0.100 molar nitrate ions. So you remember that we have the same molarity for each of the ions. So let's find out how many moles of these silver ions we have present. We know that um, we know that we have 1.50 liters of solution, okay? 
right here they tell us that. We also know the molarity of our silver, right? Um, we have 0 0.100 moles per liter. That's what molar means, so we can write it like that. Our liters cancel out, and we get 0 0.150 moles of the silver plus one cation present in our 1.5 liters of 0 0.100 molar silver nitrate solution. That's the number of moles of silver ions we have. Next, we want to find the number of chloride ions that are required, right? That's our next step. Calculate the moles of either the other reactants or the products. In this problem, we're wanting to know how many chloride ions are going to need to react with the silver ions. Um, and that's going to be pretty easy. We have 0 0.150 moles of silver and we have our, our mole to mole ratio here is one to one. That's convenient. One mole of chloride ion to one mole of silver ion. Nice and easy. So that just gives us 0 0.150 moles of the chloride ion. The next step is to cal determine which reactant is limiting. If necessary, it's not necessary. Um, in, in this case because all we're doing in this situation is um, we want to add just enough chloride ion to react with the silver ion present. So the amount of silver ion determines the amount of chloride ion needed and we don't need to worry about the limiting reactant. But we do need to do this very last step, convert grams or convert to grams because they are asking us um, calculate the mass of sodium chloride. So we want to know the mass of the, uh, or of the uh, silver chloride, sorry, not sodium chloride. So let's go ahead and convert that, 0 0.150 moles. If we have 0 0.150 moles of chloride ion, then we also have 0 0.150 moles of sodium chloride. So we can go ahead and use our molar mass to find out how much sodium chloride. This is the molar mass, 58.4 grams of sodium chloride per mole of sodium chloride, right? The moles of sodium chloride cancel out, and we get 8.76 grams of sodium chloride, and that is our answer right there. That is how much solid needs to be added. Okay, let's try an exa a different example here. Um, this one's a little bit more complicated because we are going to need to also calculate the limiting reactant. Okay, so we're going to be using all of these new concepts and going back to our limiting reactant idea. Here is the problem up here. See, when barium nitrate and uh, potassium chromate react in aqueous solution, the yellow solid barium chromate, the precipitate you see here, is formed. Calculate the mass of that barium chromate that forms when we have this situation. 3.5 times 10 to the negative third moles of solid, solid barium nitrate dissolved in 265 milliliters of 0 0.0100 molar potassium chromate solution. Well, what's the first thing we need to do? We have to write our balanced chemical equation. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to write the net ionic equation, barium two plus aqueous, but my pen isn't working very well, plus chromate dissolved in water. It's producing, I'm just writing the ones that are reacting here. Here's our solid precipitate. So now what do we do? Second step, we need to find the moles of the reactants. So how are we going to do that? First, let's look at, we know we have 3.50 times 10 to the negative 3 moles 
of barium nitrate. We know that. We know that when it dissolves, it gives us 3.50 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of our barium ion. Okay, so we know that. We also know um, that we need to find, so we have this, the moles of the barium, right, right there, the barium ion. Now we need to find the moles of our chromate ion. How are we going to do that? Well, remember, molarity equals moles of solute over liters of solution. If we rearrange that, we can say, we can find the number of moles of the potassium chromate by taking the molarity times the liters of solution, right? And they give us that. How convenient. So we know our molarity up here is, from right there, 0 0.0100 molar times the liters of solution. They give us the milliliters, right? Don't plug in milliliters or it will all be all messed up, but we can quickly convert that in our heads to 0.265 liters of solution. When we multiply those numbers together, we get 2.65 times 10 to the negative 3, use our scientific notation, um, moles of potassium chromate. Now we also know that our moles of potassium chromate, when we dissolve it in water, it will yield 2.65 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of chromate ions. So now we know the moles of the chromate ion right here. We know the moles of our barium ion. Okay, let's move on to our next step. I just rewrote the information here um, that we already determined, our equation our net ionic equation and our that our solution contains this many moles of chromate, this many moles of barium ion. So now, what is our next step? We need to find out the moles of product that are formed. So let's look at how many moles of the product are formed. So when we use our chromate ions, we know that 2.65 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of chromate We have our one-to-one -one mole ratio here between chromate and <clears throat> barium. So one mole of chromate ion and one mole of our product, barium chromate. That's going to give us 2.65 times 10 to the negative third moles of product of barium chromate. Now, let's try this for um, the barium. Uh, we have 3.50, uh, oops, excuse me, times 10 to the negative 3 moles of barium ions, right? Again, we have a 1 to 1 molar ratio, so it's going to yield the same thing for barium, 3.50 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of product will be formed from the barium ion. So I'm just going to cross that out. Hopefully you can see that. We have a one-to-one -one mole ratio just like we did up here. So we're going to get the same amount of product with our barium. For our barium ion is going to produce that, that amount of product. Um, so which one is the limiting reactant here? Well, if I can, with the chromate ion, the chromate ion is going to yield this many moles of product. The barium ion will yield this many moles. Which one is less? This one right here. So this, the chromate ion, is the limiting reactant. So we can go ahead and write that here. Our limiting reactant is our chromate ion. 
We can also write, I'll just rewrite it from our last frame, the moles of barium chromate produced by our uh, chromium or chromate ion is 2.65 times 10 to the negative third moles of barium chromate produced by that. So we have one more step. We still don't know uh, the mass of the barium chromate. So let's go to the next slide and do that part. Of it. So you'll see in the problem, calculate the mass of barium chromate here. So let's go ahead and convert our moles, 2.65 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of barium chromate. And let's convert that by multiplying by the molar mass. The molar mass, I add the uh, molar mass of barium and chromium and four oxygens together to get 253.3 grams of barium chromate per mole of barium chromate. And my barium, moles of barium chromate cancel out. And my answer here is 0 0.671 grams of barium chromate that is produced. And that would be the answer. So uh, let's go to the next page for a little more proficiency. I have printed out some uh, practice problems for you to try. And uh, hopefully you can get some of these on, on your own. It's really not too difficult. It's a lot of the same kind of thing we've done in um, stoichiometry problems, but we're just adding a few little twists to it, uh, a little more information that you have to know to be able to do these. And um, go on to the next page and see if you can get excited about doing some of the advanced proficiency. All right, here's a challenge for those of you who enjoy this. Look at some of the solutions that are mixed together, either in the video examples or in the examples on your practice problem page. And um, go ahead and figure out how would I, if I were in the lab, what would I do to set this up? Would I, you know, how would I make these stock solutions? They're talking about solutions here or adding solid to make a, some volume of a solution. Well, why don't you write up a procedure for doing one of those? Uh, carry it out in the lab. Uh, make sure you um, uh, check with me first. Make sure you look up all of the MSDS safety information and the, MS, uh, the MSDS sheets in the front of the classroom. And um, go ahead and write up your procedures and show me. And you can try this out, do it in lab, see, see what kind of a percent yield you might get on some of these problems. And uh, give yourself a little challenge. So hopefully you enjoy some of that, and I'll see you in class.